Today, we're gonna make one of these. Man, oh man, I just do not understand why these triangles are the way they are. If only the viewers of my YouTube channel understood what went through my mind whenever I was trying these crazy projects like this, or how I even got to these crazy projects. You know, like, why am I building a triangle? All I was trying to do was build some pipe stands. And now all of a sudden I'm building a triangle out of square tubing. If they only knew. If they only... Hey, 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 how's it going? Didn't know y'all was there. How much of that did you guys hear? Wow, I'm super uncomfortable now. I don't know if I want to show you this or not. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Hi, my name's Austin Ross. I've been a welder for, well, since high school, and I'm 30 years old, so do the math. For a few years, most of my career has been pipelining. Done that for about eight years. Before I went on the road pipelining, I worked, well, right after high school, I worked in a shop doing fabrication work, custom fabrication. And then after that, some drilling rigs, some mobile welding work, I guess, if you will, like fence, just any kind of mobile welding with my welding truck. And then I went pipelining. And then pipeline work slowed down, so now I am back to doing mobile welding work. So today I'm going to share with you guys what I've learned about triangles. So here is the first triangle that I cut out, the square tubing. As you can see here, there's a gap, and I was I just did not pretty much a similar gap in every uh, acute angle of this triangle. An acute angle means less than a 90. Obtuse angle is more than a 90. I actually remember that from high school. I do, that's where I learned that acute. I didn't, didn't learn that here recently. All right, so let me share with you all how I got to this. It's kind of odd that I'm building a triangle, or at least it's odd for me, because all I wanted to do was take some of this square tubing that's on this trailer that I got from that barn job that I just built. The customer said, if I could use the, you know, the drop from the project, I could have it. So I said, absolutely, I'll take it. You know, being a welder, we tend to be pack rats when it comes to metal because metal's not cheap. And if you're creative with it, you can build different things that you need out of this. So I don't know how many pieces I have, but they're all four and a half foot long, roughly. And I was like, I'm gonna build me some pipe stands, like some, some stands for either to set material on or uh, like some heavy duty saw horses is what only thing I know how to call it. Like my thought was if I ever needed to work on a bigger project, like a farm project out in the driveway, uh, like these feeders I've actually been working on for our beef program that we're starting. If I had these stands that I can make out of the square tubing, I could just take a couple of them stands, throw them in the driveway, set the feeder on it, and then go to cutting on it or whatever I need to do versus trying to get four jack stands out and running the pipe across because that's what I've done in the past. I just wanted some stands, if you will. And all I was gonna do was this right here. I was just gonna take however long it was, roughly four and a half foot long piece of square tubing, four and a half foot long piece of square tubing, and then run a piece up like that, and a piece up like that, and then run a piece across here, right? That was like the basic idea in my head. Before I even finished this thought, this is what it's like being in my mind. I got to thinking, about stands that I've seen in the oil field, which are all out of like three inch, four inch pipe or whatever, piece of pipe, a piece of four inch pipe, piece of four inch pipe, four inch pipe, like everything's four inch pipe or whatever size of pipe, but everything's saddled and, but it's a triangle. It's a really strong stand, but it's all out of pipe. So my mind went to that design. And then I was like, oh, you know what I could do? I could take this square tubing and I could just do this. And it's worked decent, all except for these gaps. So the first thing I did is I had to figure out like, what are the angles of a triangle, right? I'm pretty sure I learned this in high school too, as far as the angles of a triangle, but clearly I had forgot because I didn't know. So I Googled it. I said something along the lines of like, how to figure angles of a triangle or something. I don't even know what I punched in. But the basic thing that I learned about a triangle was all your angles will add up to 180 degrees. So I just took 180 and divided it by three and I got 60. So we got 60, 60, and 60. And so I took one full length of these short pieces, which is around four and a half feet, and I measured it and half of it was almost 28 inches. So I marked half of it and then I laid out, I took an angle finder, put it on 60, and then marked a 60 degree angle on my straight piece and then took my speed square. Where are you at, speed square? Where did you go? Oh, it's right here. If it was a snake, it would have bit me. So anyway, I took my speed square 
and I used these numbers on here, that way I wouldn't have to take this every time and line it up with the edge because it doesn't have any like edges or nothing to make sure you're accurate. I was gonna lay this on there to make sure I could just turn it with whatever angle and then see it's got a 30 degree. That's not as far as you can use this, but like that's as far as they've got it marked. And that's all, that's what I needed. So I was like, because they're 60 degrees, but to get a 60 degree angle, you need two 30s. So this is a 30 degree miter from this straight. From here, you got 30 degrees, and then this one's got 30 degrees on it. Therefore, together, they equal a 60 degree, if that makes sense. But as you can see, the first one I done had a gap in the throats here. And so I adjusted for, I couldn't figure out why. I was like, I don't understand, you know, I. I made sure I had it on 30, yada, yada, whatever. And then, so on the other one, the one that's underneath here, I just modified my angle. I used this guy, this is a, I don't even know what they call it, but it's a, it's a thing where you can save angles on anything you're working on. You know, like if you're trying to match an angle on something and you need to get the angle, you can tighten it up and you can take it with you and put it on something else to make sure you get the exact angle. There's no numbers or anything on it but it's super, super handy tool here. So I took this tool and I put it on the angle that I had of this guy. And I knew that like I needed a little bit less of an angle, right? You know, a little less of an angle. So I put it on here. I just bumped it out about halfway between this gap here. And then on the next one that I done, I put this angle on everything. And it was the very opposite. Let me just bring you all over here since these things aren't the easiest to move. You can see right away, see, instead of the gap being in the throat, it's on the outside here. So in this next one that I'm gonna build, I'm gonna go in between the two. This one was too far and that one was too far the other way. So I'm gonna go right in between and hopefully this next one, it ought to line up just perfect in the ideal world, right? All right, so the first thing I've done is found center of this piece. And what I'm gonna try to do is mark these angles and then mark these angles and then not make this cut right here. And I'm just gonna bend it. That's what I've done on those. I don't think that's my problem because I cut it after I'd done that on the second one and it didn't help my angles any. So like, I think I'm still gonna try to bend this one. But the main thing to pay attention to is make sure your lengths are all the same when making a perfect triangle. As long as your measurements are all the same, in theory, your angles and everything should match up. One thing to note, in this video is that a band saw would be super ideal because a guy could set these in the band saw and just cut them for one you could use the same miter over here as the miter for this piece if that makes sense because it's the same angle you need but i am using what i have this kind of goes back to that one video i made about that circle um, i'm just using what i have and being creative about it and learning in the process you know um I don't know, I enjoy doing stuff like this, I really do. The way I learn is by what I call doing stuff the hard way sometimes, but like, I don't know, that's what makes this stuff interesting and fun to me. So I don't mind taking the time to learn it like this. But there's definitely more than one way to go about learning things. You definitely, a guy could definitely get paid to learn, if you will, by working for somebody else, which I did have, done a bunch of over the years also. I just want to note that this is not the quickest and most efficient way to make a triangle. And for two, I don't have a bandsaw or a plasma, so I, I will be cutting this with a torch. So not only do I learn by doing stuff this way, it's kind of my only option because I don't have any other tools. It kind of reminds me of the advice a lot of successful people give about... Oh yeah? Huh? Yeah. Oh yeah. Do you got me there? Okay, I'm. Uh... I clearly got interrupted by Caleb, but that's all right. Um, did y'all see Karen? Karen's the the uh, new shop cat. If you don't follow us on Cabin Creek Farms or Industrial Tradition, or on my Instagram, you may not know about Karen, the cat that showed up. She's now our uh, barn cat. You know, micer. She's supposed to be a mouser. She's supposed to get mice. But uh, what I was saying was it reminds me of the story. A lot of business people or successful people will, will tell you to thrive on your, and I will agree with this advice because it's helped me so much. Like I don't have a bandsaw, I don't have a plasma, but look at what I can learn, you know, teach myself or whatever 
without having all that stuff. You know, I can get better at using a hand torch on thin, thinner stuff, and then I can learn myself all these angles and different ways to do stuff. You can benefit from not having everything. You know, we all have to start from somewhere, and if you actually play on that, it can benefit you. So we got this one laid out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and lay out this one over here. I'm gonna make this the same length, 27, and 7 eighths. And with these rounded edges on this tubing, I always try to get directly in line with the straight edge of it. Make sure it's, make sure they intersect with this sidewall and not the top of your rounded edge. All right, so I'm going to be using this straight edge. These right here, looks like they're sold by Flange Wizard. And somebody asked me about these, I don't know, a week or so ago. And I told them to look up Flange Wizard brand. And uh, whenever I went to look them up, I couldn't find the Flange Wizard brand. So I wasn't sure if Flange Wizard made them. Turns out they do. That's how much I observe my tools. I I literally, I got these at my local welding supply. So whenever those of you ask about where I get something or I sometimes don't know, even know the brand because I don't pay attention. I just get them at my local welding supply. But um, Flange Wizard does make them. I'm pretty sure they do sell them in threes like this. Uh, I've actually used these on a four foot straight edge before, but I also obviously use them right here on just a short straight edge. This is just a piece of metal plate. Aluminum works a little better. It doesn't get, like it doesn't get rough. I, I think it's supposed to be less likely to get rough. So it's, it like lasts longer and it's more cleaner, if you will. Um, I just haven't got a piece of flat aluminum for this yet. So I've, I literally just, this is a spacing band for pipe is what it is, but that's what I use. So a lot of you, you all have been asking about these and that is where I would look first is Flange Wizard. If you can't find them on a Flange Wizard site or somebody who distributes Flange, Flange Wizard, look up Curvo Mark. Curvo Mark, I'm pretty sure sells this guy. It's essentially the same thing as that, but it's not customizable. It comes in two foot section and all these magnets are built in to this straight edge. A lot of guys I work with call it a whiskey stick. You know, if you've had too much whiskey the night before or something, this just helps you stay straighter, right? Super handy. I learned about these these tools here whenever I worked on drilling rigs, cut a bunch of plate and stuff. And uh, it's super handy whenever you're dealing with a, a hand torch. So they call it a whiskey stick, but contour marker, curvo, here we go, curvo mark. So yeah, look up curvo mark. You should be able to find one of these online somewhere maybe hopefully we can carry them in the a ross welding store one day that would be that would be even better but in the meantime i want you all to be able to find these helpful tools because they have helped me a bunch over the years all right i got y'all a little closer now so i can show you how i set these straight edges on here for one a guy that i worked with a couple of guys that i worked with on drill rigs years ago showed me to clean these magnets what they do is literally hold their torch you know, a good distance away from it and blow it off like while their torch is lit and everything. And it'll blow these little BBs that get stuck on here as you're cutting, it'll blow them off because you want this to be real clean. And then you set it down like this to get it lined up. And then once you get it lined up, it's angled, but it's still stuck on one side of the magnet. And then you just take this and step right up and then you're ready to, ready to cut. So. I always step back and look at it from right here or over there and make sure after I do get it set up, make sure it's still lined up. And then obviously pay attention while you're cutting, which it has been more difficult on this painted stuff. Karen, y'all, that was Karen. She's been awfully needy. She bumped our uh, tripod here. Karen, you're not gonna wanna be in here here in a minute. I'm gonna fire up the old torch, come on. All right, so one of the things that I always make sure of when using a torch is having a clean, clean tip. Clean tip is your very much best friend no matter what thickness of material you are cutting. And how you know that it's clean is by the sound of it. For one, your torch, your flame, I mean, being real long like that is good, but also whenever you pull this oxygen lever, that noise right there, that's what you want. That's a good noise. 
Now I always try to fine tune that noise by adjusting my acetylene and my oxygen up here. This over here I always leave open on this style of torch. It just stays open all the time because this right here is the same thing up here, but it mixes up here, obviously. So the only issue I'm having so far is I don't like how my torch or my flame is not that long whenever I do have my cutting lever pushed down. See how it shortens up? Whenever I push it all the way down, now if I push it only halfway down, that's what I want. So I'm actually going to clean it a little better. Your torch will cut like this, no doubt, but if you're looking for the absolute best results, I would definitely get it as clean as possible. All right, let's try her again. Oh, oh yeah, oh that right there, ladies and gentlemen, that's how long that sucker is. Can you hear how it sounds? That's what you want. All right, now I'm gonna take this, one run like this, you see all that moisture coming out? And on this thin material, that's all I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna go to cut and I'm gonna angle it this way a little bit and then try to move at a fast but steady. Steady pace is the key. Moisture and start cutting, baby. All right, now that all that grinding is done, I'm gonna warm this up right here and bend it into place and put her together and hopefully she fits better than the last two. That's what we're hoping. And I don't really know if this is worth it to bend this like this. I just think it's cool. I mean, I mean, yeah, it's one last weld you gotta make, but look at how long it's taking me to do this, you know what I mean? So, again, maybe not the most efficient, but I'm enjoying it. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, bro. Now, the moment of truth. How do y'all like that old clamp? That ain't no modernized strong hand or nothing. Boy, I tell you what, I'm still not crazy happy about it, but I believe it's better than the other two. And I cannot figure out for the life of me why. It's definitely better than the other two, no doubt. I am tempted to cut that one that we just bent because it looks like this needs to go in. 
see how these two are that one's like real good that one's better and this one's the worst but it's definitely way better than the uh, other two down there so I don't know I'm probably gonna go with it that is the closest it's been so far like I said you can see my line is off center here too so you know this is probably affecting it so I might end up cutting that and whatnot but now you all see how to make a triangle okay so there's two lessons that I want to take out of many that could come from what I've done here with these triangles one is textbook or engineer versus real world in theory 360 degree angles ought to make a perfect triangle right I made a perfect 30 degree angle and I ended up with this what that tells me, and I know this from experience, but for those of you that you know are uh, maybe still in welding school or haven't even got into welding yet, don't be frustrated whenever you do something by the book and it doesn't work in the, in the real world. It, it's not a perfect world. I think a lot of that is, I mean, you gotta account for your, the metal that the torch is taking out. That's why I said a bandsaw would be better for this. You gotta account for little bitty errors here and there, like if I was off on my angle or uh, or like bending, this one I left the bend in and it's worse here. So like, there's a lot of things that affect stuff because it's not a perfect world. So that's one lesson. Um, there's a huge difference between textbook and real world. The next subject matter that I want to touch on is just taking action on something that you want to do and letting trial and error get you to that point. But before you can do trial and error, you gotta take action. I took action on this triangle ended up with this but trial and error in other words i done one i didn't like it so i done another one but i adjusted something so i ended up with this progress but still not what i wanted i went too far perseverance comes in now like you're frustrated it didn't work but change it and try something new and look for a new outcome you can go more than three times in fact, put in your head that it's gonna take more than three times to get a pipeline job or like three tries to get a pipeline job or three tries to get any welding job or three tries to get into welding school. Whatever you're trying to reach, whatever goal you're trying to reach, know that it's gonna take this times 100 times 200 times 500 times 1000. Don't let that discourage you, just know that Sometimes it takes that much work to get what you want. Perseverance, that's my advice. Persevere, don't give up, don't take no for an answer, but always be adjusting. Don't do the same thing over and over, that's the kicker. Because if you do the same thing over and over, I believe they call that insane. Be adjusting, even if it's a little adjustment, it's adjustment, you're gonna get better. You're gonna go from wide gap, tight gap, just by adjusting what you do. Thank you all for watching. And remember, learn something every day.